All right, so I got global perspective and globalization. Global perspective and globalization. There we go. What's that? I don't know yet. I'm debating. I probably will. I just might be a little bit of time. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I will get to it. I know. What's that? All oh, right. I'll probably post that over the weekend when I got some time, okay? Give you a few minutes to write these down, maybe come up with some examples. All right, so what do we have here? Global perspective. Kelsey, what do you have for the global perspective? I have two different passages and then the whole picture that we're focusing on the local perspective now. Okay, all right, good job, good job. So this is the way of looking at our society and maybe explaining how it compares or contrasts to other countries around the world, other cultures around the world and maybe see how our, our society influences the rest of the world. So real quick, what are some examples can you maybe come up with for the United States? Let's say the United States as a whole, I and mean, there's many things you can say of how we influence the rest of the world, but what example can you come up with? Raven, what example can you come up with? Global perspective. So how the United States influences other countries? Yeah. Our stock yeah, good job. So you can really say about the economy, right? And how um, how we have a large effect around the world. And depending on, let's just say with economic sanctions, right now with Russia and some of the heated tensions with Ukraine, one of our, I guess you say kickbacks to them, if they decide to maybe invade the Ukraine or try to start this conflict is we can maybe place economic sanctions on Russia and how will that affect them. Well, a lot of the resources coming into Russia is provided for by the United States. 
and uh, they can obviously draw that back to us as well because a lot of the fuel a lot of uh, the oil that we uh, utilize in our country comes from russia so you can see how that plays a factor when we're comparing our society and maybe what influence we have with other countries it's huge right especially with the united states right now uh, with the economy but you can also explain how many products that we have in the united states is really produced in china and a lot of the oil that we consume comes from russia and if that's cut off how that is going to affect our economy and our society all right good what other example can you maybe come up with with a global perspective here and how that maybe influences other countries Hadley, what do you think yeah resources okay good job resources Yeah, that's a great example, right? We can look around the world and see how maybe the, the infection rate is, okay, maybe deaths, uh, vaccinations, right? How that might be scarce in some areas around the world, but here in the United States, it seems like we have an overabundance of vaccines. Okay, a lot of the discussions is making it forced for the population. And you can even examine that and look at around the world. And uh, that's a great example of the global perspective. Good job. So COVID-19, vaccinations, maybe infection rates, death rates, right? Okay, good. What other examples? What else do we have an influence around the world? What else? Haley, Claire, what do you think? What, what else do you think? So we said about the economy, we said about resources. COVID-19 is a good example. Maybe we can look at it rates and examine and, and uh, compare and contrast. What do you think? How else do we have an influence? You don't know? Okay. No, go ahead. About what? Okay, democracy. Good job. Yep, good job. So obviously we have a say in government and that's reflected on and, and many countries around the world don't have this type of freedom, these liberties. Okay, good. So that's a great way to look at the rest of the world. And, you know, po post-World War II, especially, okay, with communism kind of spreading all across the, the world and how the United States is trying to contain that. And the reason for it is because of capitalism, because of democracy and having a voice in government. All right, good. What about entertainment? What about entertainment? What do you think, Allison? Do we have an impact on the rest of the world when it comes to entertainment? Yeah. Huge, huge, right? And uh, you can kind of examine that with box office uh, results after a large movie that comes out, like Spider-Man, right? Yeah. So we can look at the global market and see exactly how much money this movie really makes. And Spider-Man is a good example since that just came out. But uh, definitely with entertainment. And this is only getting larger and larger, right? And why do you think? Why do you think the whole world is kind of becoming more connected as we move here in the future. We'll talk about this when we get to socialization, chapter four. How do you think the world is just becoming more connected as we move into the future? Priest, go ahead, Allison. Technology. Technology, right? Social media, Facebook, right? TikTok, Snapchat, whatever it might be. Now, whenever this is posted, you can see it instantly, right? You can see a lot of these top stories through many, many, uh, many, uh, videos and many uh, depictions on social media platforms. And you can realize that we are more connected now than ever before. And we'll talk about that when we get to chapter four with a social dilemma. You guys ever see that movie on Netflix? Yeah. yeah, okay. So that is a good example of really how our world is being affected by social media and how interconnected we really are with technology. Pretty scary, isn't it? But at the same time, we're well informed of what's going on around the world. All right, okay, let's get to it here. I only wanna go over one slide and I guess the other one's just a map, but let's get to it. All right, so the importance of the global perspective. Well, where we live makes a difference in shaping our lives. And that's very important, right? And uh, with the new innovations in the United States, Obviously, that plays a role in our society and how we can maybe expand this across the world and how we can look at other countries and realize that maybe they do things a little bit different. 
when it comes to the economy, when it comes to, let's say, innovation, right? Maybe when it comes to religious tendencies, uh, education, academics, right? whatever it might be, you can apply this to many, many things. Societies throughout the world are increasingly interconnected through technology and the economy. And we just mentioned many examples of that. And Hadley, I'm glad you brought it up with COVID-19. Okay, there's many maps depicting on the news and social media of the spread of COVID-19 and, and uh, really things like that. But the economy, innovation with technology, and how we're really becoming more connected than ever before. All right, many problems that we face in the United States are more serious elsewhere. All right, if you think about it, when you look at our population and really what freedoms we have, and uh, what uh, the standard of living, especially how our standard of living is compared to other countries and other places around the world, we're actually in the top 1% of wealthiest people in the world, even us middle class citizens here in the United States. And the reason for it is because when you look at other places around the world, not everybody has a car. Not everybody has the luxuries of going home and really just sitting down and watching your favorite show or a subscription to Disney Plus, right? And uh, we kind of take that for granted in our country, just really how our standard of living is just so high compared to other areas around the world. And it's kind of amazing to think about even us middle class citizens or even kind of lower class United States are at the highest end of the world uh, when it comes to standard of living. We have grocery stores, literally, we can drive to and uh, we, can, we can fill our refrigerators with food. Anywhere around the world, they don't have that. These items like televisions, cars, uh, radios, whatever it might be. And anyway, thinking globally is a good way to learn about ourselves. And just realizing how, uh, really how our, our industries work, okay, how our society works, our economy, and just explaining it, looking at it, and comparing it to other countries, and just realizing what the luxuries we have here in the United States compared to other areas around the world. So standard of living is often brought up when you look at the global perspective, when you look at uh, really just standard of living compared to the United States and the rest of the world. Oh, I didn't get to that. I'm sorry. Anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll finish this up. I'll talk about the sociological imagination more tomorrow. Um, I wanted you to look up an example of the global perspective. Just think of an idea. It's going to be your bell ringer tomorrow. Okay, so come up with an example of a global perspective. If I can get this, there it is. See you guys later. Have a good one. Take care.